it was kind of my my foray into uh, seed oils way back when uh, when I was uh, looking at the obesity rate over the last 50 years, how it's climbed, and, and, and you could see, you know, a perfect correlation between our increase in seed oil consumption. Uh, I even did a video, the real poison that's killing us, and I yeah, you know, yeah. demonizing seed oils at the time. And uh, of course, now we've uh, got oh, it's a, huge now. Oh, it's huge. Everybody's all over the place with those, how they're manufactured, who manufactures them. And, uh, and I've kind of moved my stance onto that is that the vast majority of those are consumed uh, as part of ultra processed foods. So you think the, deep fried foods. the discussion gets conflated because you're getting the inclusion of basically garbage foods representing them as a whole and some of them could be okay in certain circumstances or how would you yeah well we do see in the research that when you replace saturated fats with mono or polyunsaturated fats you you uh, see a, a decrease in in uh, apob mm -hmm. uh, and we also don't see any increase in homocysteine or crp mm -hmm. uh, hscrp we don't see any inflammation markers that are measurable from the consumption of, of seed oils as much as i hate it because I, I did say in my rant, I said, I'm biased. They are a poison to me. I'm allergic to them. When I eat them, they give me diarrhea. Yeah. And uh, I spoke about that. But that doesn't afford me the opportunity, as I just got done uh, critiquing many other keto people, that doesn't afford me the opportunity to extrapolate that onto the masses without sufficient evidence. Yeah. So like, what do you, when Paul Saladino, for example, comes out with really aggressive claims about it, which you know, may or may not be founded. What are your general thoughts? Because it, oftentimes it's, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, you'll see a video from Lane Norton the next day, basically dismantling them and then they're going back and forth. And sometimes it's yeah. hard to know as the layman, these are both highly intelligent individuals who are well-educated and seem to do the research. So who am I supposed to listen to? Yeah. Well, if you rely on epidemiology, but we have many now randomized controlled trials showing, and then oftentimes they'll pick out a, they will cherry pick a study. Uh, I think one of them was the, uh, 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 they're gonna escape me now, the Sydney Diet Heart Trial, and then there was another one out of, uh, I think, Michigan. Uh, they were horribly conducted studies. The trans fats were in the mix involved there. Uh, the length of the study, the number of participants, there was just so many problems. When you find when they continue to go back to the same two studies, mm -hmm. which are, are horribly confounded, and then completely disregard uh, all of the current research, we, we have mechanistic data, we have epidemiology, we have um, randomized controlled trials, and we have uh, Mendelian randomization, uh, all pointing in the same direction, uh, and they'll continue to bring up the same stories. And then they conflate it with, uh, and, and you can hold these two beliefs equally, uh, they conflate it with, you know, big oil or big sugar or hmm. big pharma or, you yeah, know, whatever yeah, else. So you can believe that, that, that big food uh, is, is a bad thing, generally, yep. uh, that they're profit-driven. You know, you can believe that and understand, again, the evidence, not the research, the body of the overall evidence looking at the body of research uh, and, and agree that, that they're not poisonous. Uh, there's no evidence to that. You know, point to um, a, a biomarker. Point to all you can point to is in ex if if in excess. The same thing's true of, of say fructose and high fructose corn syrup versus sugar. They've had many, many, many replacement studies, yeah, swapping yeah. one for the other, and it's calorie driven. When the calories are in excess, then you start to see the fatty liver accumulation. You don't see some special problem with, uh, you know eating one or the other of those and, and that's it's frustrating and i can already see the comment section you know i've, I've watched it over and over and over again uh folks just freaking out because they just haven't bothered to deep dive into the research and look at the comparisons and these are examine.com's taken a deep dive into these things obviously Lane norton has uh, another great resource that uh, uh, uh alan flanagan from alienian nutrition uh, is just brilliant uh, does brilliant analysis on research uh, and he's criticized me multiple times over the years for, uh, you know, claims that I've made, one being seed oils mm. um, uh, and one being shitting on Ansel Keys, uh, huh. which, uh, which, you know, he correctly pointed out that I didn't read Ansel Keys' entire uh, research study. Somebody who's famous for that is, again, Nina Teichel. She has a whole book, you know, blaming big this and big that and conspiracy theories here and conspiracy theories there. But uh, when you come down to the actual evidence on the nutrient itself, 
Uh, it's it, it's very shaky, if not just horrible. And uh, uh, and Gary Taubes did the same thing. And I mean, his his wife is recently apologizing on his behalf for, yeah. you know, saying he wasn't doing this intentionally. He he had he has a good heart and he meant well, yep. uh, but he was wrong. You know, and Dr. Jason Fung's wrong about the carbohydrate insulin model. It's been disproven over and over and over again. And people think if you eat a grape that your blood sugar is going to elevate and you won't be able to burn fat. Gary Brecka's on that board, the carbohydrate insulin. Uh, yeah. He's just driving that, that whole thing. It's not true. Um, who was the gentleman recently that just, he, he spiked his blood sugar every single day, ate sugar every single day for a month and lost weight. Jordan Syatt. Oh. Yeah, okay. it, it's fantastic job. Just demonstrating it's it's the calories. It's not that yeah. your blood sugar mm -hmm. elevates. That's a normal physiological response. 